So I'm going to go over some of the basic uh, initial like feeding of material and calibration uh, procedure for this printer and give you some you know my comments on the process. So um, one of the first things you want to do uh, with a printer is you know you want to load material. Um, I'm actually using uh, this is a uh, spool holder from Octave. Um, basically, lets you swap out um, for different size spools like the. Um, the Phineas spool holder has a larger hole and it's skinnier the octave one and you know other companies is gonna you know might be different sizes so that's kinda nice to be able to switch between those without having to unbolt anything um, this little spool is basically a tube holder um, at the top is you know it's nicer than sort of the, the default built-in one um, which is kinda it's kinda thin I mean one thing you want to avoid is if the material like if the filament pops out, then that's bad. So this will help prevent that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the on switch on the back of the machine. Um, basically, you get a red light telling that there's power to the printer, but um, it's it's not ready yet. So one thing with this is you have an initialize rocker switch. You can also do the initializing, I believe, in the Affinia software, all, uh, software also. I generally do it on the front though. And what this does is it basically homes all the axis and kind of does maybe a self-check on the printer. So um, you basically hold this down. It's going to beep four times. The extruder fan comes on and then you can see the, uh, the axis, the different axes uh, home themselves. I just have the perf board on here with the, the binder clips holding it down. Um, it's generally what I do for most of my prints, unless it's uh, something that I need to keep the warping down to an absolute minimum. Uh, then I'll screw the perf board down. Um, I tried with glass and Kapton tape, um, kind of mixed results with that. I would like to try glass and blue tape though and see how that works. So I'm going to load, put my spool on. I'm going to put it through the little arm here, and then you basically will thread this through the, uh, the tubing until it comes out the other end. You can see it come out there. Um, put the tube in a little hole there. Um, you can see on the print head, on the top, there's a place to put the uh, filament through and you just kind of rest it down in there. Um, next thing you do, in the Affinia software, the screen's not too easy to see, sorry. Um, basically go into the maintenance menu, oh. plug the printer in, that would be a good start. Um, go into the maintenance menu and you can select um, Basically, there's a couple number of different buttons. Um, there's an ex extrude, withdraw, and new spool. New spool basically just um, the software will keep a count of how much material is left. Um, so whenever you change spools, you should um, enter in how much material is left on that spool. Um, it might be a good idea to put like a piece of tape on the side. And before you swap out different colors, just write down how much is remaining on that. You could also use like a scale to sort of measure the spool. Um, so I'm going to click the extrude button. And what that's going to do now is you can kind of see there's a little LED down here that flashes um, whenever the machine's working or thinking, basically. So right now what it's doing is it's heating up the uh, it's heating up the extruder nozzle temperature. Um, takes a little bit to do that, um, so I will come back when it's getting close. Yeah, it probably takes maybe a couple minutes to get up the temperature. So this is about ready to start extruding. So you would do this every time you loaded a new spool or change color or whatnot.
you gotta be careful of the nozzle, it is quite hot, it's probably over 500 degrees, so... So now that it's extruded, uh, we can get on to sort of the calibration process. In the maintenance window, um, it's kind of where you'll do, uh, you can move, you can kind of move the head around, center it, you can change the um, height of the um, height of the build platform. Um, you can set the nozzle height. That's one thing you'll have to do. You'll basically have to um, one of the key things is, is setting the height of this platform, making sure that it's basically uh, level with the nozzle head. Um, so there's some instru instructions on how to do that, uh, you know, with the sort of um, basically the printed materials that will come with the printer. Um, you essentially will just um, basically raise the bed. You can kind of see the adjustment screws under here. Um, it's basically little thumb screws if you tighten it. There's, there's three of them. So um, if you tighten this one, the bed will go that way. Tighten this one, it'll go that way. Tighten the back one, it'll go back. So you can see using a combination of those screws, you can, you can get the bed level. You basically will run it to the different corners. I mean, you'll, you'll, um, you'll have this a lot closer. Um, but you would run it and check the distance between the head and here until you can basically get about two pieces of paper through. Um, once you've done that, you set the nozzle height. Um, after you set the nozzle height, um, you load the this is sort of the, the calibration print that you'll want to print out. Um, and after you print that out, you can go into the calibration menu and you basically enter in values that correspond to uh, your printed model. So you'll want to get like some uh, like digital calipers off Amazon for like, I think you can get them for like 10, 12 bucks. Um, one thing that I found useful is um, the calibration print that comes with the printer, basically the calibration model, uh, is sort of limited in how high in doing the, the Z offset. Um, I guess the reason you have to do calibration is um, when this printer is assembled, um, this carriage is basically bolted onto here, um, and so it can be tilted forward and forwards and backwards. So you have to sort of account for that, and each printer is different. Um, so that, that's sort of why there's a, uh, a sort of a calibration process. Same thing too, um, this print bed can, can be shifted, and so you can have some skew. So you basically kind of accounting for the, the different skews that can happen just in the printer assembly. I mean, the, the printer's pretty close to calibrated, at least mine is, but, um, you know, if you're doing larger prints or things that are sort of have, you know, need to be sort of precise, you know, um, you want to kind of pay attention to the, the calibration process. Now, one thing I noticed is, like, the height on, on, like, these little pieces here, it's only 40 millimeters, which isn't really enough to get, um, a precise like Z value. Um, so what I've done, you know, what I would do is I would make little like pieces like this, like this is for the X and Y, but I would print that and then I could measure um, the angle here. And then since I knew, <coughs> since I sort of know um, the values that it's expecting, I can just do a little bit of math and um, figure out what value I would need to enter into the calibration uh, window. So, um, like for example, for doing the for doing the z-axis, um, I basically had a, I printed a big piece like that, and then say it was 120 millimeters tall, 
and then I can figure out the degree and then figure out um, what offset I would need to match that degree for something that was 40 millimeters tall. Um, I mean, it's getting a little complex. You could certainly just use the model that it comes with. Most people do, um, and you'll get there. Um, I'm a little bit more, I like to be a little bit more precise than that, so um, I kind of made and printed out my own calibration models. So um, one thing you'll want to do is um, up in the before I print, I like to go in and check in the calibrate window and make sure up here it'll have um, your current calibration values. Um, just make sure that they're still there and haven't been reset. There's been an occasion where um, I'll print something and it looks skewed and that, the calibration values got reset. Like one thing, if you have a, a failed print and you can hit the initialize to basically, um, you can kind of stop a print that way. Um, if I stop a print in the software and then re reinitialize the printer, um, it seems like it resets those calibration values as opposed to just turning the power off in the back. So um, now I make sure that I just turn the power off in the back instead of hitting this initialize button, which basically it's hitting it twice. So that's probably why it's clearing those values. But um, I've been able to get things pretty accurate um, after doing the calibration process. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, feel free to you know use the models that it comes with, make some of your own. Um, the one thing you can do too, um, you can pause a print midway through, change out the filament spool, um, put a different color in, or something like that. So if you have a, uh, you, know, you, could, you could imagine if it was printing this piece, um, you could have this part be a different color than that part just by pausing the print and, and loading a new filament. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of an overview of that process.